Good evening, my name is Hannah and I'm refuting a speech on affirmative action. Throughout the speech, it is not evident of what the main claim is until the conclusion. The main claim is that affirmative action should be eliminated. The first supporting claim that my opponent said was, affirmative action lowers standards of accountability needed to push students or employees to perform better. I'm not challenging the claim itself, but the evidence provided. The evidence given is a hypothetical example of a, of a minority student getting into Harvard with a two point with a 3.2 GPA and that there is no motivation to get that 4.0 if they will get admitted anyway. The reason I am challenging this is because there is a missing key point that these minority students are also low income students. According to Kayla Bunge of the Tribune Business News, <coughs> the Office of Pre-College Program at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater recently was honored with the Program Achievement Diversity Award from the State Council on Affirmative Action and the Office of State Employment Relations for its work in making college an attainable goal for minority and low income students. Generally, students who are a minority are also low income. These are the students who have less opportunity to get help from tutors because they do not have the money to pay for them. The second main claim is that, supporting claim, is that students admitted on the basis on this basis are often ill-equipped to handle the schools which they've been admitted. For this supporting point, I am challenging his example of a high school science fair contestant being offered a job at NASA because of the work shown at the science fair. The reason I am challenging this is because it is a hypothetical example that is unrealistic and does not help the original claim of affirmative action needing to be eliminated. A more realistic hypothetical is to argue about several people applying for the same job with similar qualifications and then applying this principle of affirmative action to help decide who to hire. With this, it will create diversity without having to sacrifice quality of work because of applicants, they'll have similar qualifications. The third supporting claim is that it demeans true minority achievement. This means that everyone is labeling the success of the minorities to affirmative action, even though they really gain success through hard work. I'm not necessarily challenging the speaker on the fact that he wanted the audience to just think about how Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell got to where they are and suggesting that it is not by affirmative action, but it is the part of the speech that there is no evidence that truly supports the original speaker's claim. To strengthen the argument, the original speaker should have added that according to the biography page of Condoleezza Rice on the Stanford University website, Dr. Rice was a professor of political science since 1981 and has won two of the highest teaching honors. The 1984 Walter J. Gores Award for Excellence in Teaching and the 1993 School of Humanities and Sciences Dean's Award for Distinguished Teaching. There's no one who would argue that it is the result of affirmative action as seen. In conclusion, I agree with the claim that something should be done about this issue, but would not go to the extent that it should be eliminated. In some cases, it does help people get into colleges, even though they are low income, and it's not their fault that they're low income to be able to get into these colleges on their own. And as heard in secondary claim number one, it can help the minority. And, but, but as also heard in claim number three, it is not only the reason for people's success. Thank you for your time.
right, you identify the subject and then you talk about the proposition despite the fact that you thought that the advocate had failed to do so until late in their presentation. Uh, your challenge on the first point is okay, you're saying there's a problem with the evidence, but it does at one point sound like you're beginning to uh, have an odd trend and that is here's a way that they could have argued this particular point, which is more of a critique than it is a refutation on that particular point. Um, same thing occurs on the second point. I, I thought you had a very clear transition to the second point. You argued how the hypothetical <coughs> is unrealistic, but then you come up with an alternative way of supporting the point and I'm not sure, again, that 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 really works very well uh, as a refutation point. Uh, on the third point, uh, you summarize the advocate's uh, position here, and then you come up with uh, better proof as to why uh, the one candidate should not be viewed in a negative light, which I'm not sure really, uh, it doesn't contradict the advocate's principle, it merely illustrates in a more direct way the principle that they were explaining. So it's it's the presentation that you're giving sounds more like it is an evaluation of the advocate's argument than a refutation of the argument. At the end of the speech, it sounds like you're basically taking the same position as the advocate but arguing for that position either for different reasons or by say, suggesting that there's a better way to advance that particular claim. And, uh, you know, it's basically back to if, it, if we were in an argument, if both people are jumping in on the same side, there's no argument anymore. Now it's just a question of, well, who makes the better presentation for that side? But the purpose of the proposition is to divide the two sides, and that doesn't seem to be what's going on here. All right, thank you.